Hello everyone, welcome back to Blender, where I am constructing the often imitated but never duplicated Akira class Starship. As you can see, we've I've started doing some more detail work back onto the catamaran hull. There's also a little bit of work that I've done on the saucer section, but not too much because it's not what I'm focusing on right now. I just cut in just a couple little extra details into it because I needed to do this little recessed area here where there's going to be some windows in the catamaran hall and I figured well I might as well go ahead and do this X section right here as well where there's going to be the uh, sideways facing torpedo launchers but we kind of came back up into here or I came back up into here and I started working on more of the details inputting in some not only hull plates but also as you can see some little grid lines into it and I'm we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I did those today because I think I showed you I mean if you're watching all of my episodes or at least the other series that I have up right now which is the Enterprise J you'll you hear me talk about how I came up with a or I found online a new way of putting in these grid lines in it which I actually kind of like to a certain degree certain degree because it has its up and downs which I'll talk a little bit more detail a little bit later when we get started into it but I'll explain about how I did those and you know for the most part they do kind of give a much cleaner look especially if you go into kind of a render mode and take a look at it and once it renders yeah, which it takes just a little bit of time to render in, but it doesn't look too bad. So I'm kind of happy with that. I think I might be cutting him in just a little bit too deep, so I need to be a little bit more careful with that or observant with that once I, you know, really start getting into it. But beyond that, I mean, I'm actually kind of liking it. So we're going to go ahead and continue with that. So we're going to go back to solid mode and... There we, maybe, yeah, there we go. All right. So, but anyways, the way that we're starting that I'm now doing these grid lines, which I'm going to go ahead and cut in the grid lines, because similar about how you have this portion here, which is grids, there's grid lines right along here on the catamaran hall. There's also a lot of grid lines that we'll be putting in on the saucer section once we get started with that, uh, you know, and those grid lines, they not only mark hull plates, but if I understand my, uh, you know, the technical aspects of these ships and how they're supposed to work in Star Trek, they're also uh, deflector shield, you know, they are deflector screens emit, emitting or something like that. They Something with the deflector screens. I'm not 100% positive whether they're where the screens admit out of. And I don't know what the difference is between screens and the shields are. I think screens is kind of like gives like minor protection without, you know, only to certain parts of the ships or, you know, but and maybe y'all would probably explain to me more in the, in the, you know, in the comments, but let's go ahead and get started. So normally if y'all remember correctly about what I would from previous episodes to do grid lines, what I would do is I would go in and like do a control R. Let's say like there's a grid line right here. I do a control R, add an extra ed loop, edge loop, try to move it in as close as possible there. And then I put in another edge loop, like right along, you know, right along there and try to keep it. Then I would simply go in and start manipulating vertices just to try to get it to where it would, you know, look just right. And then I would have like, you know, like right here, let's say if the grid line's right there, I would do that, then I would do that, and then right there would be our grid line, if y'all remember correctly. The problem with that is, it's like I'd have grid line right here, let's go into face select, you know, one, two, three, right there, and then I would extrude that, such as, you know, like press E, extrude, and then there would be the grid line, which that definitely does work for what we're wanting but however exit out of that the only problem is is that there would be an oh you know i probably shouldn't have done that is that there would be extra vertices that would be added in extra lines which i really don't i really don't 
I mean, I need the extra lines and vertices and faces and stuff in this section, but not necessarily in this section. So it would really add to that poly count. So there's a new way that I've done it, and I've seen some people online do it, so I'm starting to use that, and it really kind of works, is I will do this. So let's say, for example, okay, we're going to draw the lines here, and you can't really see the grid lines on this picture but i have another picture that i'm using let me go ahead and pull that up real quick uh that really do show the the grid lines a lot better so let me pull that up here real quick Let's see that's going to be oops and no bear with me here I'm trying to find it trying to find oh there it is and I want to open up with photo gallery because I don't like the new photos. There we go. All right. Okay, got it. Now there's another little detail I need to add in right there. We'll take care of that in a minute. But it looks like it goes here, along there, back to here, and then back to there. So it's it's pretty straightforward. One, two, actually, one, two, yeah. It's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is... And I'm going to do K, hold down to K, and that gives me my knife tool, which uh, y'all see me use in the past. And one thing I discovered recently is I thought that you just kind of click, and then if you go here, you, know, you draw a straight line, which is okay, and press enter, and it draws extra vertices in there, which is okay. But I discovered recently that actually what I could do is if I hold down the mouse button, uh, I can actually draw curves, which is what I'm wanting to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and press K again. It gives me the knife tool, and I'm going to line this up right where I want it, which I'm going to use this edge right along here, which would be right along that edge there, right there if you can see it. And so I'm going to start there. Actually, how much space? Yeah, that's on. Wait, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. So I'm going to start right there. Yeah, I'm going to hold down my mouse button and slowly start to kind of draw it. Then once I get there, I'm going to cut straight down to there. Which right there would be a good place to stop it. Press enter. Now I do need to go back in and clean that up. But now I need to go right about here as we follow this line to there. Press K. And start there. And kind of curve that up. And I should be right back where I started. So it's not quite a good clean curve. But then I can go in and, you know, press, you know, select the vertice, press G G twice to move these along to get them, you know, a lot more, you know, to clean up the mesh, so to say. So I just move that along, move that along. Don't really like that. There we go. It's looking better. I wish that that image was on. Whoops. My big fat fingers get in the way again. Okay. That looks good. It's not 100%, but it's, it's barely noticeable. And now that I discovered this feature, I'm going to have to try to see if there's a way that I can use both pin input and mouse input in Blender at the same time. Because I could draw a lot better with the pin than I can with the mouse. Um, I have been thinking about getting one of those, you know, rather than using a mouse, using one of those trackballs. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, in forms and things, and even one of my sisters, you know, did design work with them. They say that it works very well. You have a, you tend to have a lot more control with, you know, especially in 3D space, you know, with the trackball. But if I had, if I could do this and use my, like a pen, pen and pad input, you know, like a Wacom tablet, that I could do a lot of interesting stuff. Well, anyways, moving right back along. So now I have those moved in. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start off with, let's select that vertice 
I'm going to hold down the control button. Oh, it looks like I need one more in there. Let's go ahead, press K again, right there. There we go. Boom. All right, hold that. I'm going to hold down the control button, go up here and find where I started these new set of vertices up there. This is another little feature that I discovered recently, which really helps is just hold down control between two points and rather than shift and one, two, three, if I hold down control and I click that point, it selects all the vertices between that point. Like that. And there. Oops. I'm gonna need one more vertice there. I know that probably just messed me up. Let's go back in the top view real quick. See if I need to adjust that. Yes, I do. Like that. Now let's try it again. So we go there, there, there. Definitely makes, you know, doing this a lot, lot easier. There and there. So now I got that entire edge done. So now to get that look right there out of this, what I'm going to do is control B and what that enters in is bevel mode. So what it does is it actually tries to bevel that area. It moves vertices out of the way, adds in extra vertices to give kind of a bevel. You know, and I can scroll the mouse button to put more edge loops in there for whatever reason if I need to. Uh, in fact, that video that I saw that edge introduced me to this, what they would normally do was put in one, you know, extra edge loop like that, select the edge loop on the inside and drag it down. But that kind of made more of a V-knot shape. I don't like that. You know, I guess that's kind of a way to do it if you want to add in... Uh, or you know try to reduce the amount of vertices you put in your model but anyway so you do control B move your mouse till you get it just the right amount of thickness that you want which is I'm gonna go right there which I kinda like and then I go extrude and extrude that down just ever so slightly and voila there we go edge some little bit of uh, plate details or edge details right there and so it's a lot cleaner as you can see it goes through and it adds in only the extra vertices in the area of where you want it doesn't add extra vertices along there and it kind of makes it look a little bit cleaner to a certain degree so i think it'd be better if i had the you know the uh you know the input to where i could use the mouse or not the mouse i'm sorry like the, like a tablet to be able to draw onto it I think it would look a lot better and I'm gonna have to try that one day and I'll get back with y'all to let y'all know how that works so that's how I'm doing that that's also how I kind of also did these hull plate details that are raised up okay so yeah it looks a lot better looks a lot cleaner however though there are a couple of little issues with it which uh, the number one issue which I have is with it is that for some strange reason when I do it this way if I try to unwrap this Blender at least. I don't know if it's the same in other programs. And other programs might actually have you know better ways of you know doing what I'm doing right here. But Blender seems to act kind of funny with the mesh with unwrapping it. And we'll definitely revisit that later once we start. You know, um, you know, once we actually start kind of unwrapping this mesh a little, you know, unwrap or you know texturing this ship. We'll definitely go back and revisit that, but that's an issue that I've noticed about it. And you'll, you'll see what I'm kind of talking about. It just doesn't wrap it cleanly. I, say, I don't know if other programs will probably work better. And, um, you know, it's something that I'm probably going to definitely try down the line if it does indeed work better or other programs work better. But from my experience, not really. Um, you know, there are, there are ways that I can work, or, or I mean, I'm sorry, not experience with other programs, but I don't have much experience with other programs, which is something I'm thinking about probably doing. I'm thinking about actually using, you know, trying out the free trials of some of the other 3D programs out there, like 3D Max. You know, it's definitely going to be an increase in cost for me to try to get, 
you know, to get one of those programs, especially since I am not doing this professionally at the moment. I am strictly just a kind of, you know, a hobbyist with this. Ooh, I need to fix that. Um, I'll mess with that a little bit later because I'm going to have to probably redo that whole, whole thing. Um, Oh, well, I guess I could probably show you a line. If we do something like this, like this little panel here, it's already been, you know, raised up a little bit to give that hull plate detail. You know, if I see this little spot here that I want to try to move, you know, because it's not going to move very well. You know, I could select the bottom one. You know, let me go ahead and go into this. I could select the bottom one and move that one out. But this top one, I can't move out. If It looks like it's moving it out, but really... What all that it's doing is it's moving it along this vertex path, which is just going to make it look, you know, it's just going to make it shorter. Uh, so what I would have to do is delete all the faces on the top right here and then move that and then, oh, you know what? I can't really do that. Darn it. Uh, cause that's going to take even longer if I just reface this whole thing. Um, well, I guess I could do, you know, select both of those, do G and move along the Y axis. Well, yeah, it's just a little bit. I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. I'm just worried about it move, you know, sh because it's curved. I'm actually moving it into this curve a little bit. You know, small distance, you probably won't notice it, but a long distance, if I move it this way, it's going to drop down by, a, you know, quite a bit. So, but, oh, that's fine. Let me go ahead and get back to this and I'm going to kind of try to space the differences between this hall plate and the next hall plate to make it a little bit more even. It's not going to fully match the image that we have. And I mentioned it before that the reason why I'm using this image is as opposed to actual orthos of the actual model, which is available online, is that that model, I mean, it was made very quickly, you know, and Dirty was given more detail than some of the other models, but it was made quickly. It was redone eventually at a later time, but it was still low poly. And if you look at it very carefully, you can see that there are some discrepancies along, um, along its mesh. It's not symmetrical. I don't know if the program that they had had a mirror modifier, but it's not symmetrical from one side to the next. It's not... So, you know, if I try modeling it just with one side with the mirror modifier, this side would be on perfect, but this side would be off a little bit. Um, the bottom section right here is actually a little bit, you know, off-centered as well. It's a little bit more to, I think it's this side than it is to that side. So this one right here looks like they took that model and drew it all out on one side and then mirrored it. So you do have... So it's the same on both sides, symmetric. So it is symmetrical on both sides, you know, so I'm using this, but it's not the most detailed, you know, hopefully maybe the orthos on my model would one day probably be, you know, somebody would want to use it to, um, you know, to make, you know, their own ship. Well, you know, maybe you never know. All right, so we're going to do that. And the other thing I don't like about doing it this way is that I don't know about how, well, I know how Blender is going to look at this because it's going to take treat that as a face. Or, yeah, it treats that as a face and it treats that as a face. So it's just splitting it up into a face. But, you know, unwrapping it does some weird things. But anyways, back on to what we're talking about really here. Uh, what was I talking about? I just lost track. Went off a tangent there and I don't remember what we were talking about. Oh, that's right. Other programs. But I'm thinking about trying some other programs like 3D Max or, you know, Maya or something like that, just to see what it's like, to see whether if some of the uh, features that they offer would be, you know, would actually, you know, would it be worth actually probably one day looking at buying it you know i mean one of these days i'm you know oops why did you not draw that other one let's try that again i mean who knows one one listen, right now i'm not doing this professional but you know professionally but one day you never know i might probably want to start you know looking at doing this professionally and you know if i don't have the right tools 
you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be very professional work, you know, uh, and I don't know how many, you know, professionals out there, you know, professional companies or what have you actually use, you know, Blender or what have you, you know, so, so one of these days, yeah, I might have to look more into that. And I'm going to go ahead and I could follow this arc around here, but I'm going to try to straighten it out just a little bit. So I'm going to start right there to get around that and go right there. And we'll straighten it out right along there. There we go. But just out of curiosity, because all those programs have free trials, I'm going to try it out just to see how I like it. You know, and to see, you know, there are some things with Blender as much as it's as I like how it's ex exceptionally, especially it's because it's free. You know, as much as I like that, there's a lot of little, little things with it that, you know, like for example, the, you know, the UV unwrapping features that is in Blender. I just have trouble seeing that 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 is something that more you know some of the more expensive programs you know that that being a problem that they have i see it being something more along the lines of you know they probably got their their act together with it so it's it's probably a lot better I, you know what i'm saying i mean yep i might am i just you know just talking nonsense here i think i, I might be and maybe i'd probably just need to stop uh where is the oh there it is so we need to go and i'm going back and forth between okay oh okay i see it now i see it there we go like that then we go like that then we should meet that back to there there we go let's go back and clean it up but you know i'm gonna i'm gonna try it out and you know I might actually probably, you know, I'm thinking about it, maybe doing kind of another, you know, a small little, why did you not, all right, maybe another, you know, kind of like a little short series, so to say, about, you know, all right, well, here's, here's, you know, a little bit of my experiences with modeling in Maya, and here's my experiences in modeling in 3D Max, and just because I wanted to try out those other programs, I'm not saying in any particular stretch of the imagination that Blender is not a good tool to have. I mean, Blender is a very good tool to use. It's, it's, a, it's a lot better, you know, 3D tool, especially one that's free than some of the others that I've seen out there, and out of, you know, out of respect, not to really, oops, you know, I'm not going to say what some of those other tools that I've used that I didn't like, but there were some 3D tools that I was trying to use in the past, and, oh, they were just, you know, hor they were just horrendous. I mean, they were free, granted, but they were horrendous. You know, I tried Blender at, for a while, but I didn't quite like it, or it was just the interface was just, I don't know. If you ever, if you never used, you know, 3D programs before, when you first open up Blender and you just have, you know, this default cube scene, you know, that, you know, it just, you know, with all these buttons and windows and stuff like that, and you have no idea how to use any of the, oops, you know, you know, in anything within it, it's, you know, it's, it's quite, um, how should I look at it? Kind of intimidating. Because you don't know what you're looking at. I mean, you know, if I open up the default screen, I mean, you know, well, now it looks a little bit better. But when I had it, it was just a straight on view. I think it was a orthographic front view where you'd have the cube, you'd have a camera, you know, and you were, you didn't know, you know, how to operate anything inside here. You know, it was, it was very intimidating. And I kind of looked at it, played around with it for a while. And I was like, you know, I don't really quite like this. May, I'm sure there's, there's a methodology to using it, and but I just didn't have the patience nor the time to try to learn it. So I looked at a couple of other programs, and I found some programs to where their GUI interface was a lot easier. And so I was starting to use those. However, though, they were very limited. And I was starting to not, you know, I really didn't quite like the end results. 
you know, back then I was actually working on a small little project of mine, which got me into 3D modeling to where I'm, you know, I'm a big uh, Transformers fan, the original 80s Transformers, not the, you know, not the new Michael Bay Transformers. I mean, I do like some of those movies, but not all of them. But I was, you know, actually trying to make my own, you know, uh, Transformers movie. Me and my wife, which was, she's a fan as well, you know, um, you know, we came up with this awesome, in our opinion, it was an awesome idea, you know, for a, you know, for a script for a Transformers movie. And I was like, you know, I actually want to see this. So I wanted to make it. So I got a couple of programs and I started actually using it and, you know, it's, or started making it. And I was like, well, okay, the results are okay, but it looks nowhere near like what you would see on television. You know, and I was getting a little bit, you know, discouraged, you know, thinking, well, maybe I'd eventually have to buy these, you know, $400, $500 programs just to do a little project of mine. But then I decided to finally, I seen videos in Blender of people doing what they, you know, do. And, and I'm sort of thinking, well, hell, maybe I ought to just go ahead and, okay, I missed, messed up something, but it's fine. I'm, I'm just going to just yeah, ignore that. Just don't pay no attention to that little line right there. I'll fix that later. Um, actually, I'm no, actually, you know, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, don't have to be 100% accurate. Do I, do I really everybody? Y'all, y'all, no, I don't have to be 100%. Who's 100% accurate. In fact, there's going to be, there's already some changes I've done on this and some changes I'm going to make on this ship. That's not accurate to the model. Those are going to be my interpretations. You know, so it's and it's it's ones that I think that belong there, such as once again those, you know, these little areas right here, recessed areas for sensor pallets and stuff in here. Because even though this is looks like it's more of a warship, I'm pretty sure that you know when they're not at war, they're going to use this ship for scientific purposes or something. You know, so they need to have all all the little bells and whistles and things. So, all right, uh, let's see, we're almost done here uh but yeah i was making this move so i finally got back into blender and you know finally sat down and figured okay you know what i'm going to go ahead and you know look at the tutorials i'm going to learn how to use this thing and it took me quite a bit of time to finally you know figure it all out but after some trial and error and after a lot of lot of you know fail test renders and things like that i can say that i finally got the hang of of blender and here i am today and i actually started making some of that uh fan movie that i did uh i actually started a web page which is it's no longer active anymore i mean last time i checked to it i mean it was a geocities web page but i was going on to forums and I was asking people, you know, saying, Hey, I got this project that I'm working on. If anybody's fans and y'all want to help me out with it, you know, uh, hit me up. And I never got, well, I got one person that said they were willing to hit and help, help me out. Cause I needed help with people with modeling. I needed more voice actors and stuff. It was, you know, it was a pretty ambitious project, but didn't get a lot of people on board. In fact, at the time, um, one thing I will, say is that you know some of these forums now have you know dedicated areas to where it's like hey you want some volunteer work or paid work or what have you you know post here and if anybody's interested they'll you know they'll get back with you but i guess at the time they didn't because i actually got kicked off of a lot of forums because they were telling me no you don't come here to peddle your work you know or you know like, well why is the forum here then you know you know, well, it's for troubleshooting purposes or to show off your work. Wait, I can show off my work, but I can't ask people to help me out with my work? That oop, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but, you know, that's what their rules stated. And I've actually had a couple of admins, when I argued back before they locked my account, point me to the, um, you know, to the rules page stating, you know, it's like, well, they... They would they would always go back and say, well, you know, we we're not taking solicitation, you know, do not solicitate your 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 monetized work, which that I could understand, but you know, I was just a you know a 
you know, a young, you know, 20 something man, you know, that was well, young 20 something. Well, compared to now, I was young, you know, just wanting to do a little, you know, a little pet project of mine. So now what I'm doing here, I'm just doing the same thing that you saw, you know, in the other areas. What I really should do is come, I should have been using consistent uh, I can go back and fix that. That's no big deal. But be more consistent in how high I'm raising these panels. Um, and I'm not 100% positive how that looks. But that's all part of when I cleaned up the mesh. But anyways, long story short, Blender's still a good program. I mean, I got some pretty good results out of it when I first started using it for my first major project. So, you know, it's just... I just want to try some other programs because I've discovered a couple little issues with Blender, you know, and try as they might to make it better. I mean, it, it, it is getting better. There are quite a few powerful features in it that you can do. Uh, just recently, I started toying around with the Cycles Render, which is, you know, instead of Blender Render, Cycles Render, which I can't do inside this program here. But I've been toying around with that, and I really like the results of how that comes out. You know, I'm sure other programs, once again, probably have, you know, better features. But, you know, compared to me, I mean, you know, compared to what I'm used to, you know, I really kind of like that feature. So it's still a good program. Uh, but I just want to just, you know, just try something out just to see what happens. So... Well, but we're almost done with this part of the episode, or let me go ahead and model this one last thing, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, detail at what we plan on doing. So control plus, just to select more vertices, and all these colors are going to be replaced once I start texturing it. I'm just kind of just placing those colors in there right now as a placeholder, just so I can get an idea of how I you know, of how all those hull plates look and everything, which, you know, bump maps and textures, I could do all of this with minimal effort or minimal amount of vertices added in, therefore reduce render times or what have you, and you can have more of the ships and still get reduced render time, but uh, just when you get in closer, it just looks a lot better to have all those little extra details. So, so once again, I'm going to go ahead and probably start closing off this episode, so that's kind of the way that we're doing the hall panel details here and you know it for the most part I mean it really works I really like it and I'm glad I kind of discovered it which I would have discovered a little bit earlier on some of my earlier models that I did but oh well you know that's that's all part of the learning process oh great moogly moogly uh that well, all right, that I can fix, but I need to move that out there because there's there's windows in that section. So something happened somewhere. All right, but anyways, we'll figure that out. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, work off screens, putting in some more hole details. And another thing is that now that we got this saucer section done, I'm going to go through and clean up the bottom part of this catamaran-style hull. So if we go into wireframe mode, let me select nothing. You can see that this catamaran hull actually kind of goes down deeper into this saucer section than what we than what we really need. So I'm going to try to you know delete some of that and smooth it out. And plus, I also need to kind of really model some of that down for the, you know, as we were talking about earlier with interpretation, with my interpretation of how of how you can do a saucer separation on this ship and still be somewhat practical and pretty cool looking, I think, in my opinion. So we'll touch bases with that just a little bit later. So, but yeah, I mean, the details on this is coming along pretty good. I am definitely decided that I'm going to model every single one of these windows. Oh, that's a lot of windows, but I'm going to go ahead and try modeling, you know, you know, every single one of these windows into the model that's going to really shoot up that poly count, but I think it'll be worth it. I mean, there's not too many windows. Like in the Enterprise J, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and texture in a lot of those windows instead. But, you know, we're talking about, you know, thousands upon thousands of windows on the Enterprise J as opposed to this. It's maybe a few hundred, 
you know, maybe at the most. I'm going to be modeling those in, modeling in all the little extra details and stuff. And then once we're done with that, I mean, get all that in, then we're pretty much done with the catamaran style hull, which uh, then I will go back to these pylons here to detail them down. And then we'll start working on the nacelles. I'm going to save the saucer section for last. So, you know, work our way back. And some extra details I'm going to be putting onto this is one thing I've always noticed about this, and give me y'all's opinion on it, is that I never really thought that for this ship, as loaded up on torpedoes as it is, didn't have really a whole lot of phaser banks. I mean, all that I could ever see on screen is that as the phaser banks on the upper and lower portions of the saucer section. Beyond that, there wasn't really much. So I'm going to add in some more phaser strips. And I'm thinking, you know, kind of like how in the Enterprise D, I'm going to add some phaser strips right back into this little, well, it's not a blank section, but right back here. Oh, I need to cut those hull details out too. I'll be doing the same method that I did that you just saw me here to cut in those little, little details there. But yeah, I'm going to put some phaser strips somehow right along here. Or maybe right along there. I don't know. I'm going to toy around with it. But along in the back portion. So when they're moving away. You know there is. You know some phaser fire. And. Uh, you know top and bottom. You know put some along there. Put some along here as well. Uh, probably. I don't know. Maybe even put some phaser strips right along the bottom portion of this catamaran hull, just to try to give. Just because you know, if they're being attacked from this direction underneath, they only got these phasers right here. Which technically, oh, it's only one phaser bank. So if that's out, they have no other phasers to fire with. So we can put a couple of extra phaser strips here. So I'm gonna toy around with it to try to think about it. You know, I may even put a phaser strip right here on this um, in on this weapons pod here. Who knows? I'm. I'll start looking into that a little bit, but give me y'all's opinion. But until then, I'm going to go ahead and close out the episode. And I want to thank y'all for watching. And this is B-Belt Den. I will see you in the next episode.